For decades, he was the keeper of Muammar Gaddafi's secrets. Abdullah al-Sanusi was the brother leader's eyes and ears, as well as his brother-in-law. Despite his proximity to the regime, he kept a low profile. This rare appearance on Libyan TV in July this year, designed to quash rumors he'd been killed in a rebel attack. His response to that attack was defiant. I'm surprised how the Crusader West supports those terrorists. When there was an international coalition to fight terrorism, we were part of that. But the coalition has now changed. The US and Britain were fighting extremist Islam, and now they're allied with them. At 61, Sanusi headed the regime's much feared military and external intelligence agencies. After the February 17th revolution, he was blamed for the deaths of hundreds of Libyans and was accused of bringing in foreign mercenaries to defend the regime. But his involvement with the regime went back much further. In the 1990s, he was thought to have been responsible for the infamous Abu Salim prison massacre in which more than 1,200 Libyans were killed. Later, Sanusi was sentenced in absentia in France for his role in the 1989 bombing of a passenger plane flying over Niger that killed 170 people, a charge he denied. He was a constant presence in Gaddafi's relations with politicians and prominent figures around the world. Some reports even suggest that it was Sanusi who was behind a plot to assassinate the Saudi monarch after he fell out with Gaddafi. Many exiled opposition members accused Sanusi of systematically targeting politicians and activists who'd fled Libya. Since the start of Libya's uprising, Sanusi was one of the men Gaddafi entrusted to suppress the revolt. Along with Muammar Gaddafi and his son Saif al-Islam, he was indicted by the International Criminal Court. But Libya's caretaker government says it's up to Libyans to administer justice. Sanusi's capture is another strike against the rule of fear by the Gaddafi regime. Like the capture of Gaddafi's son Saif the previous day, many Libyans will be celebrating. Anita McNaught, Al Jazeera.